Good afternoon. We are about to start the bid presentations for DebConf 21 in your city. As you can see, I'm not Gunnar. He's already had to, um, he's already had to leave, so I have taken on substitute presenter duties on short notice. Um, we are doing this in the order of India, Sweden, Kosovo, and Portugal. And we'll first have all the presentations from the various bids, and afterwards we'll take questions from the audience. Thank you very much. Go ahead, India. Hello, everyone. Hi. So, bidding for India. Why India? India is India and everybody wants to be in India. Do you want a better reason? Uh, we have a strong team in India, though if you count the number of DDs in India, it's not very huge, but the whole free software community there is good in having a lot of events. You can see uh, these are the guys who, even though they are not, in DMs or DDs, all those people listed down, they contribute and they contact, they arrange a lot of Debian related events in India. So, this gives an idea of how much events we are having in India. Since 2010, we had like 15 mini DEPCONs or DEPUTS, that's an Indian flavor of mini DEPCONs. We had kind of 15. Uh, in 15 places or 15 times, we had mini DEPCONs in India. So, next. So, these are a glimpse from the different mini DEPCONs we had. Uh, you can see the number of participants. Uh, in, in, even in a mini DEPCON, there are like uh, usually three to four hundred people. Sometimes, sometimes there are like around a hundred people. Uh, this is a workshop room, uh, a lot of workshops and uh, packaging workshops. We even had like seven days packaging workshops and stuff in different events. Uh, you could see some of the logos. This is a mini conf in Pune in 2016. And a lot of recent events. A lot of Debian t-shirts. <laughs> This is the packaging workshop which, is, which Praveen is conducting. Yeah. Yeah, not just Debian, we have all other kinds of events, like there are events which happen every year, like the NITC Force Meet, which like it started in 2005, it happens every year. Swatandra is an international event that gets all the free software guys from around the best people around the world to for a three-day conference. And that happens tri once in three years. Then there are like other conferences, GNUnify, FordCon, Gnomesia, all these kinds of events we have had in India. We have been thinking about a DEPCONF in India for a long time, but maybe because we were in here a lot, we didn't know how DEPCONF works. That's why we didn't bid better be like before, but now we are ready for DEPCONF. One of the motivations that uh, we should have that uh, if FUDCON has happened in India, uh, and if FUDCON could happen, we could obviously have a DEPCON as well. So other events like release parties, we have a lot of release parties. Uh, whenever there are releases, like for Buster also, we had some recent release parties here. Uh, this gives you an idea how active uh, a lot of uh, local user groups are. So these are some glimpses about on the Buster release parties. Uh, some of the release parties were also covered by local newspapers. So we have not uh, other communities in India as well, like all false things. I'm not going into details about all these things. Let's uh, yeah, so we have so, a lot of uh -huh. other communities around. This is around. not the whole map of India. This is the place where we have maximum activity of free so software uh, groups. 
Uh, that is where we are actually planning to have the DEPCONF. Uh, yeah. So, uh, we, a lot of Indians haven't attended DEPCONS now, but we were in different teams, we know what happens in DEPCONS. I think, yeah, we are ready for it. Is India affordable? Uh, these are various comparisons for, let's say, a glass of beer or a liter of bottle. Uh, also for uh, if, if for the accommodation rates. Yeah. Okay. For food. Just a second. We love you, India. Yeah, so we have a lot of uh, varieties of food for, for vegans, for vegetarians, for non-vegetarians. There's a lot of variety for almost everyone. So, uh, contrary to the myth, uh, most of Indian food is spicy, but there's a lot of non-spicy options as well for those who fear spicy food. Spicy things can be made non-spicy if we remove the... Uh, chilies. Chilies. But there will be, there will still be flavors in that. So we are thinking of like we haven't decided on the exact location. Uh, it's like we want the best. We want the best for Depcon. So like we are doing the pros and cons of different places. This has something good. This has something good. So we are trying to find a place which suits, which is best for DEPCONF. So like, uh, these are the two locations, both are very touristy locations, but we'll make sure that DEPCONF is good enough that you won't be. We, we will try to have it at a location which is away from the major uh, touristy places, so that you won't, be. we will definitely have a really good day trips. Uh, uh, the location should be would be really nice wherever it happens. So the connectivity we have a lot of international flights. Actually, where we are planning is mostly in Kerala or Goa. In Kerala, we have four international airports, and Goa is a busy airport in India where you get flights from all all around the world. Yeah. So this is where Goa is around the map. And this is where uh, most of the Kerala places are. So this is the Cochin International Airport. Visa yeah. regulations. Uh, you can see that uh, a lot of countries easily get e-visa for India. Some of the countries uh, have visa on arrival. Very few countries actually require visa. So it's pretty easy to get to India. Yeah. So See you all thanks in a lot. Thank you very much, India. Next up is Sweden. Hello. Right, I am presenting on behalf of Sweden. I am not Swedish. <laughs> um, and once again, this is Graham's fault. He likes setting us up for stuff. Um, DEPCONF 2021, 20, 22, the basic, the, the reason why we're presenting here is saying that we would, we'd be keen to organize a DEPCONF in Sweden once we 
if the community feels it's time to go back to Europe. Um, but we are not stro stro like we're not um, sold on doing it next year or the year after that or whatever. Um, it's about the community. We're welcome to withdraw our bid or work on it more. Um, we just want to know what the community wants. I think there's an RC meeting tomorrow night where we can talk about it more. Um, this little duck here is called Torben. He's the um, mascot for the Academic Computer Club at Umeå um, University. There, uh, hopefully there'll be some romance or bromance or whatever between the two ducks. Or the whatever pojita is, chicken. Uh, so I'll quickly talk about why Sweden, location, preferred dates, travel, accommodation, food, venue, and the local organizing team experience. So, um, Sweden is efficient and sustainable for meetings, even during the heat waves. Um, it hits about 30 max, uh, so not the 40 plus that we've been seeing for Europe. Um, very much English speaking, um, pretty much everyone speaks English there. And we have basically daylight 24 hours a day, which is great. Um, very fast internet connectivity with some details there for you. And the exchange rate is roughly 100 Swedish kroner to $10 US. Um, after the um, elephant buff, I asked the team if they're willing to start a conversation about how we can have a conversation about the political climate of the countries that we're submitting um, bids for. So they were willing to sort of experiment on this on the go. So we put this slide up in an attempt to make this participation better based on feedback that I've heard from people in that path. Um, so this is just an experiment and if people don't agree or it's just to get that conversation going. So we included this. We understand and support that hosting DebConf is not an endorsement necessarily of Swedish policies or political views. And then we thought it might be nice to have an outline of what exactly the hosting country or the bidding countries policies are, so obviously we can't list all of them, um, but um, Matthias, or what is his name, Mazwan, <laughs> I better know as Mazwan, um, gave like an example of how Sweden considers their policies. So for example, um, it's generally safe from physical violence and the laws have a very reasonable idea about how you can respond to perceived um, threats. And this is, um, there's a current topical thing about that. Sweden is very explicit about welcoming all participants, as you can see there. But it also is one of the few countries who have a positive consent for sex, for example. So it's not just the absence of no consent, but actual positive. Um, so we feel that's quite progressive. Um, and I encourage other bids and just other countries to continue this conversation. It, it, at the very least, it's educational, and there's always a bit of fun laws that make no sense. Okay, so location, um, it's a bit ironic that I organized Cape Town all the way down south and now I'm going all the way up north, um, and that's part of the fun. Umeå is in northern Sweden, um, it's a few kilometers short of the Arctic Circle, so not quite Arctic yet, but um, I guess it depends on how you look at it. Uh, Sweden is a U EU member, um, it is part of the Schengen um, Agreement, but it's not, it doesn't have the euro as a currency. Um, Umeå as a university um, town is quite com um, compact. It's four and a half k's away from the airport and two and a half k's away from the city center. Um, and it's very accessible to get around and it's also um, quite bicycle friendly. It's the largest um, town, 127,000 inhabitants. Um, what I have read when I went to Sweden last um, was even though it's very far north, because it borders the Baltic Sea, it's quite a nice climate. So it's not as cold as you would think um, it has. Umeå University is quite large, um, has good local transport, and a very walk and bicycle friendly city. Um, Mazwan would prefer it to be in the summer of whatever year we, as a community we decide on if we do this. Um, after midsummer and before mid August, uh, probably better early in, um, early in July, and the plus is definitely having that midnight sun. Uh, Umeå is very well connected to international transport and I've, I've taken the train there, it's really nice um, as well, it's about six, seven hours from um, Stockholm um, and you can see other details there. Uh, this, this presentation is linked to the bid page so I won't read through everything. Accommodation is one of the things that we are working hard on, um, there's not university residences but there are a large um, number of hotels and I think the DevConf in Germany 2015 or whenever it was 
um, worked really well to book a hostel out because I think that gets a really good spirit. Um, and I'm really keen to try the camping um, possibility as well. So we'll probably have a, some more of a creative thing rather than booking out a, a hotel, for example. Um, food, um, Mazwan has organized um, lunch tickets that you can choose where you want to go eat throughout the meals. Um, so it's not a big catering, but we'll obviously consider all of that um, as well. And it is very close to grocery stores that open very late, um, etc. Okay, uh, Mazwan works at the ACC at um, Umia, so he would, I think this would be absolutely our first choice for a venue university venue um, with whatever that comes to. We, I'm not sure if we'll use the largest rule um, because it's very big and awkward. We'll probably do a satellite venue um, for the plenary and for the rest it shouldn't be a problem. Um, Central Park um, campus is really beautiful and lots of space to enjoy outside and, and be social. Okay, so the local organizing committee. Uh, the main person is Mazwan. Um, and he's cited at the Academic Computer Club. He does have people who are not well known to DEPCONF but are willing to help. Uh, he's been at DD since 2005, I think. Um, and he has recently organized a, a very similar conference. He was also involved in the DEPCONFs in Oslo and Helsinki, and that's 2003, 2005. Um, so it's a bit old, but sort of relevant. <laughs> um, and then <laughs> me, um, Daniel is not part of this, but he did share his um, this picture with permission, um, although I guess he will be involved. And then Graham, who's watching this from home and obviously forgot how much work Cape Town was, <laughs> he was the one who came up with the idea. And then Luna, who's been following um, on IRC, uh, has al is also involved at this point, and you're welcome to join in as well. And I think that's it for us. Um, I don't know if there's any questions by IRC or comments that I should say, but we could probably post that later. Right, thanks. Uh, up next is Kosovo. Ready or not, here we come. Uh, do you want a headset mic or um, yeah? No, you can. Okay. Yes, you can. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. Okay, what's, what's your choice, mm. headset or handheld? Pick mm. one. Is it working? Talk into it. Talk, 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 talk. Test. F5. Yes. Can we? Persian Detia, good afternoon. Uh, so we had this karaoke night last night, and if I feel like singing, I beg your pardon. I am Enkelina Hadjiu, and this is Albion Ahuti, and we come from Republic of Kosovo. And although we are so new to the community, but with many participants here, we decided to bid this year and bring Deb Conference to, the, to Kosovo for 2021. 
And uh, while this is being said, we can now enjoy a video, which I can, I'm enjoying it by myself now. Test. Wait a second, from the beginning. <laughs> Do I, don't I have the early morning light? Ick. One more. I don't like to miss that beautiful early morning light. It could be summer or even winter. You feel like you're on top of the world, surrounded by great energy, breathtaking landscapes. Visiting Kosovo is easier than you think. It's an adventure ready for you to live. The day starts with a warm welcome and impeccable coffee. You can be anywhere, an old mosque, a church, a monastery, or a plain, a mountaintop, a lake, a cave, or a waterfall a festival, any kind of dancing, or just singing from dusk till dawn. Are you ready for the challenge? You may call it a vibrant, diverse country, and so it is. Kosovo, ready for you. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yeah. So Kosovo is a newly founded state, but a country which has existed for a thousand years and has an ancient history. A place where the religious tolerance is at its highest. A place where homophobic incidents have never happened since we are a state where same-sex marriages are allowed and where the foreigners like you are most welcome regardless of race and nationality. As you can see on the map, Kosovo is located on the Balkans Peninsula, which is the southeast Europe. Uh, it has a population of 2 million, and it's really easy to get there. You can do it through the Ademi Ashari airport, which has 72 flights per day and over 2 million travelers in 2018, which is like our population. Uh, people who do not uh, need a visa to travel to Kosovo are the uh, citizens of the Schengen member states, European uh, Union states, uh, USA, Canada, Australia, and Japan, also the holders of the laissez passer, which means let them pass, as I now learned. Uh, we use Euro, uh, 95 of the citizens have internet connection in their houses, and the prices are pretty cheap about everything. Uh, Kosovo is a fertile uh, plain surrounded with high mountains with uh, 50 peaks over 2,000 meters which gives us the opportunity to horseback riding, swimming in natural pools like, like the Mirusha waterfall you see there, uh, hiking and uh, winter skiing and kind of having fun. The culture in Kosovo is uh, unique from what I've seen in other countries. It is derived from our Illyrian ancestors, but influenced by, uh, by different cultures and emperors like the Byzantine ones, Ottoman and West culture. You'll get to see differences in the cities that we have, in, not the food, but the cities in Kosovo. Uh, they are pretty different uh, because we were kind of occupied from Germans and Austrians during the second but we always went during the Second World War, so we have the, uh, that influence. Uh, and you'll get to see this difference, and you'll be there during the summer of 2021 for sure. So you will uh, have the chance to see the International Documentary Festival, which is like a famous one, which is called Doku Fest. And then we have the Animation Festival, which is Anibar. Of course, you can go to museums, theaters, and concert halls. I'll drive the mic for now, and I'll be back. Hi, boys and girls. <coughs> this is Alviona Houthi, and there's a question for you. Who has visited Kosovo? Raise your hand. One, two, three. That's quite good. 
<laughs> so I've been uh, networking and some of you know how much I love food. First, it's always food. We have a great food in Kosovo for everyone who wants whatever he wants, he will get what he wants. We have traditional food like the Balkans. You get to eat Kosovo food, Serbian food, Albanian, Greece, everything. Just ask and we will put in the menu. So it kind of looks like interesting, but it's, it tastes very good. We don't have rice and beans every day. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can have this one. <laughs> Kosovo has like around seven, eight cities. Every city is special. It has amazing spaces like this. This picture is Pristina, the capital city. This is the center. You can see here our national hero, which is Kanderbeg. Behind it is the government, so we didn't want to put that on it. Don't worry. And some other cities and like cultural places where you get to hear about the story of Kosovo, how it turns out to be the newest country in Europe, and other stuff. Yeah. Second, music, art, which is like, oh my god, I can't live without it. And we have proven that to the world. You may know Rita Ora, Dua Lipa from some songs that you play every day in your car or when you listen to music, like programming or stuff. Yeah, we have amazing artists around the world. We have amazing culture. We have amazing art. So we get to see that when we are there together and enjoy different places, different clubs, different I don't know, there are too much of these, so yeah. Third, tech community. This is the one that I got to get involved when I first started uh, studying, yeah. And this is us, the Coder Girls from Kosovo, the first picture. These are some other groups and NGOs in Kosovo who got to work really hard they doing a lot for the youth there. We are like 70% of the population under 33 years old. So we have a lot of creativity around in every field. So we want you guys to come and see it and to, to know about Kosovo a lot, like in everything, and get to enjoy it with us too. <laughs> so now is again my turn. This is, so we are getting on more technical stuff. This is the campus of University of Pristina. We have been thinking of it to be the venue. It's a beautiful place in the center of the town with uh, many hotels around it. One uh, information, the worst architecture for the National Library, you will find it in the internet, just search for it. Yeah. I think it's the most beautiful, but okay. For us. <laughs> for us. Uh, this will be the main hall where the venue would be and the front desk. This would be where the mini auditorium would be. Uh, this is the main auditorium with uh, around 500 seats. This would be the mini auditorium which is inside that national library and it's kind of beautiful. We would have this as our hack lab. We have two hack labs. This one also and now, if we analyze the map, the number one would be the venue, and number two would be the place where the mini auditorium would be held. Uh, here is the campus, and there are a lot of uh, other faculties which have auditoriums inside if we need to use them. So, uh, since Debian is a community who strongly supports diversity within it, I want to raise a point. <clears throat> You know that there is a position in Debcoms from the local team which, a, which someone needs to have. For example, we have Antonio Tercero. I'm sorry for not properly pronouncing the last name. We have him from Brazil. But uh, I may call you to recount, have we ever had a woman do this? Daniel gave me a name, but uh, on these last 20 Debcoms, or first 20 Debcoms, there have been only 21. Uh, have we had women doing 
that. Uh, there haven't been many, so I think as you can oh. see, and I think as you saw our friends from Kosovo here, we are here to change that. Uh, we have the chance, we have the opportunity, so why not give it a chance for Kosovo uh, DevConf in 2021? Thank you. you. Thank you very much, everyone. Do you have questions? And I forgot to say, obrigado. Thank you very much. Uh, next up is Portugal. Let, um, Um, dois, três. Um, dois, três. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm here to present the bid for the for the Conf 21 in Portugal. Why in Lisbon? It's Europe, we have tasty food, we will have opportunities for, for social events. There is a need to create a local, open source local community because there are contributors but no community, strong community, and you have a good weather in summer. Where it is? By the sea, in the Iberian Peninsula, in the western tip of the Europe, Where is the, what is the venue? Venue is technically Lisboa, like last, presented last year. One of the top Portuguese engineering schools with over 100 years of history. This is going to be the main hall with 300 seats. This will be the two auditoriums, different from last year. This, they are more, this, two, this auditorium is more accessible than the previous, than the previous year where the, there are seats, sorry, where the entrance leave the people in the middle of the seats or to the table of the presenter. This is where we'll put the, the various act labs and rooms for the organization. This is the same building with, um, that will be open 24 hours a day. IT facilities. In Portugal, we have very good 4G coverage. This means that you can make a call on the streets, go to the subway, take the train, leave the, leave the subway, leave the station, you are still the same call without cuts. You have a wide Wi-Fi coverage on the campus, and you have a dual uplink to the, to the internet. Food. Who don't like food? We will have several vegan and vegetarian options. Traditional Portuguese foods, as you can see examples of it. You have good and expensive, expensive espresso coffee. That's one of the trademarks of the Portuguese, good espressos. There are several restaurants inside the venue where you can choose where to go to eat. And there are several restaurants near the venue, multicultural. This means that if for some reason you, don't, you are not appreciating Portuguese food, you have several options to try. What is the weather? Pleasantly warm, dry, and clear blue skies. This is a typical blue sky in summer in Lisbon. Accommodation. There are several hotels, hostels, and guest houses nearby. This means you have plenty of selection for different prices. For the last year bid, you may found accommodation for 350 sponsored people. So, you think this is not, should not be a problem. Travel. Most airlines have direct flights to Lisbon. 
several low cost companies fly to Lisbon and there is a subway, ten, nine, ten stops from the airport to the venue. So <clears throat> it should not be a problem to go to the venue from anywhere on the world. Visa policy. Portugal is in Schengen space. So this means most attendees won't, do not need visa to enter in, Lisbon, in Portugal. As you can see from the map, the greens, the greens are the countries ex exemption from visa. And the most problematic will be the gray, gray countries. So, and you of course will help people to get visa to enter Portugal. Cheese and wine import. My proposal is like next year, instead of calling cheese and wine, you call it pão, queijo e vinho. This means bread, cheese and wine. Because in Portugal, eating cheese without bread is strange. There is a, there is a law, law of import win, wine and beer. And you very much welcome other kinds of beer and wines. The problem will be food. There is no, there is no laws to bring food from outside the European Union. But there is now a recent agreement from the Mercosul to bring food to Europe. Fun and free time. There are nearby beaches, night markets, bars and discos, music festivals in, in Portugal, especially near Lisbon, where there are several musical festivals, and the environment is safe and friendly to the foreigner people. So to the end, this is the lock. This is the lock. The people that belongs to the local team, or that express their help to help. Sorry, express their desire to help the organization to, to organize the DEPCONF. And you can see in the end there is already a contact address to contact the organization. Obrigado. Hello. Um, we are now going to open the floor to questions from the audience. Please line up at the question mic over there. Um, yes, everybody, um, all the bids, please come up to the stage so that you can answer questions. Um, send one representative, I think, each, just to make it easier. So, not particularly. So, Go ahead. are we on? Uh, Hello? Hello? Question mic, please. Hello? Yeah, I think yeah. so. <laughs> yep. So, one slightly concerning development from all of these, and I didn't see anybody talk about beer at all. I didn't see anybody or hear anybody talk about beer at all in any of these four presentations. Please reassure me that you have good local beer. We have beer and wine. We have our winery, which is like country made, produced. We can go and visit the place. It's a really huge one. We forgot to put some pictures. It was like a lot of things. like. The country is big, 2 million people live there, so yes, we have beer, Birapea is name, it's this one of the cities, and everyone loves it, it's really good, and we have wines, which is like Stone Castle, it's a castle, it's the winery, they make wines, beer, and guess what, Rakia for everyone. <laughs> I cannot talk about Portuguese beer because I don't drink, but I can show, I can be certain there are a lot of wines to choose, and students drink a lot of beer. So this means around the venue there are several places that sell cheap beer, where you can see middle of the day, middle of the day you can see a lot of students li lying around drinking beer. Uh, we have a lot of local uh, breweries. Uh, in most cities. Also, uh, we have a lot of uh, beer selling companies, uh, not just beer, wine, and uh, a lot of different types of alcohol. 
a lot of uh, uh, locally grown brands are there as well. So there's no dearth of lack of beer. I feel insulted that I have to answer this question. Do you not trust me? Um, I think my main motivation for living is beer. So if there is good beer to be found in Sweden, we will find it. Um, I think Ging's, uh, his speciality is more the hoppy beers and the stouts. And I am interested in the Pilsners. And if we have to drag that keg with us, smuggled it in with our bellies, then that's what we'll do. But if there's good beer to be found, we'll find it. Cool. Thanks, folks. Any further questions? The mic is open. Looks like we're... Looks like we finished. Um, of course, if you're not here up, up here presenting, you're still very much encouraged to present a bid at some point. Um, I believe bids are meant to be due by the end of this year and will be decided early in 2020. Um, yes, see you. Um, see you, well, soon, somewhere. <laughs>